Hey, what's up everyone? This is Vegetarian Zombie, and I want to welcome you back to Beginning Interactive Fiction with Twine and Sugarcube. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about loops, and I'm going to demonstrate to you how powerful loops are and why you'd want to use them in your story. Well, let's open up this Brig passage here again. And when we last left off, we had simply created this concept of an array. We created an inventory, and basically an array was a list. We were just adding items to the list. So in this case, when the player picked up a key card, we added it to the inventory. And then when we, they picked up the wrench, we added it to the inventory. And as you can see here, right here, we defined the inventory as an array. That's what these brackets stand for. And this push actually adds the items to the array. Now, at this point, to access the elements of the array, we have to know the exact index of that. So in this case, this would be zero because we always start counting with zero. This would be one for a wrench, and this would be two. This gets problematic because in your game, chances are you don't know what the player has in their inventory. They can pick up more items. They may pick up items out of order, or you may even allow them to drop items, in which case your inventory is not going to be sorted and you're not going to know the exact position of a certain, say, object or a certain piece of text like key card or wrench. Loops allow you to iterate through that entire array. They also allow you to do a lot more, but they really work well with arrays. So you could iterate through the entire array if you're looking for a particular object, or you could use loops to automate repetitive tasks. The real best way to understand this is to see this in action. So I'm gonna come down here, and we're gonna create a very simple loop. And the way we do this is we use our standard macro opening, and then we just type four. This indicates that I am about to create a loop. Now a loop, we need to determine how many times we want this loop to run. But before we do that, we need to start a counter for this loop. And we're gonna create a variable, and I'm just gonna call it i, and I'm gonna set it to zero, like so. And after this, I'm gonna put a semicolon. This basically, this basically means I'm creating a variable i, and I'm assigning the value of zero to it. And now I'm going to provide another statement. If I don't add the semicolon, SugarCube is going to get confused. It's not going to know what you mean. So a semicolon in this case is like a period at the end of the sentence. You're saying, hey, SugarCube, I'm going to create a loop. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this i variable to zero. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to determine how long this loop is going to run for. Well, I want this to run 10 times. So I'm just going to put i less than 10, like so and I'm gonna put a semicolon after this. So basically, as long as the variable i is less than 10, this loop will continue to run. Now I mentioned I wanted this loop to run 10 times. So if we just closed it off here, this loop would run forever because i never changes. Well, to change it, we now just simply do this. We do i and we can do equals i plus one, like so. Uh, this is a long form way of doing this. Uh, a, a simple short form way is just doing plus plus like that. So basically what we're saying is that after each iteration of the loop, i is going to increase by one. We can increase it by any amount we want, or we can even decrease it. As you know, plus plus increases i by one. If I did minus minus, I would decrease i. Now the problem about decreasing i is that it would, this loop would go on forever. We would have what is called an infinite loop. And believe it or not, you've experienced this when using programs before. For example, you're going through a program and suddenly the program just freezes. Not, the, the computer still responds to everything. There's no issues whatsoever, but the program doesn't accept any more input. And what you have to do is go to your task manager and close it. Chances are you might have entered a infinite loop, meaning a loop is just spinning in the background, the computer thinks everything's working at normal, but you're not able to progress or do the things that you want to do. Okay, so here we have like so, and now I'm going to create another for. This is the close for. So everything inside this for is going to be repeated. And what I'm going to do is just write hello like that. So this should write hello 10 times. Well, actually, this would write hello infinitely. So we're going to add a plus plus like that. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna play this. And then you can see, hello, 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 hello. This loop printed out, hello, 10 times. As I mentioned, for loops work great 
with inventory. So let's imagine this is an inventory passage. In fact, let's create one now. We'll say, check your inventory, like so. Now, when we come back here, we have our inventory passage. Now, this is something I would probably do, and obviously we have an error here. Let's see what's going on, not too sure. What I would do at this point is I would try to make this inventory separate from these other passages so that it could be accessed from every passage. And that is a, a project in itself. In fact, I do that in my intro to Harlow video tutorial series. I highly suggest you check that out. You can see that pattern, what I use, and apply it to Sugarcube. But in this case, we're just gonna we're just going to allow the user to access their inventory from within the Brig passage. Okay, at this point, let's just put right, you are holding, and now we're going to print out their inventory. The way we do this is we do our for loop. We do four, and again, we're gonna set our, vari our i value to zero. Next, we're gonna set our i is less than, and we're gonna do this, the inventory variable, and the length. So the length of the variable, the length of the inventory, I should say, and we're going to loop through each item we have in the inventory. And then finally, what we're going to do is increase the value by one, like so. And now we'll close the for loop. And then what we do is we simply print out the value of inventory, like so. If this is confusing, what I'm doing right here, then definitely check out the previous video tutorial on array so that you can get an idea of what's going on. Okay, let's see this in action. I'm going to run this. And we have a go to cell. Okay, so obviously that kind of got messed up. We'll fix that later. We're going to check your inventory. We check it. Okay, we forgot the closing tag. Okay, we're going to close this up here. Let's see. I tend to do this a lot. Okay, let's run this again. We'll check our inventory. And now you can see you are holding a key card and a shoe. And then of course, at the very end of this, we can, you know, go send a pass, send the user back to where they came from. That is working with loops. Again, loops are very powerful and you can really use them a lot. When you find yourself repeating yourself, you're doing lots of code over and over again, that is a good candidate for doing a loop. Remember, the computer should do the hard work for us. We should stay above that and conceptually design our stories. So if you find yourself repeating yourself, then definitely defer to the loop. All right, everyone. Well, that's the end of this video tutorial. In the next video, we're going to be covering objects. And this is where you can start really leveraging some of the power of Twine to make your life much easier. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video. See you then.